Okay, hi everyone. So, um, in order to um, to tackle chapter 13, simple linear regression, we're first going to look at uh, some basic measures uh, for um, to, to measure the relationship between two variables here, x and y. So we start by looking at covariance. Covariance here uh, is is basically giving me an idea of the strength and the direction that x and y are moving uh, together. Okay, uh, and it is represented by this formula right here. Um, this formula should be uh, very uh, familiar to you. In fact, we've seen it before when we were looking at the sample variance for one variable, in this case x. And the formula was this one right here. So notice how this formula looks very much like this one for sample covariance. Uh, here we are basically taking the measure of the shared variance between x and y. Okay, and so this formula will give us values that can either be negative or positive or sometimes equal to zero. A negative value of sample covariance tells me that I've got a negative relationship between x and y. A positive s of xy tells me that I've got a positive uh, relationship between x and y. In other words, uh, as x increases, y increases. Okay, um, and if this was negative, then I'd have uh, this would imply here that as x is increasing, y is decreasing, right? In, in either case, I'm always dividing by n minus 1 because, again, this is a sample measure as opposed to a population measure, okay? And so um, the sample covariance also provides me uh, with... Um, an indication as to how strong uh, the linear relationship is between x and y. And that strength is determined by uh, how far s of x, y is from zero. So a value of, uh, say, plus 10 uh, tells me that I've got a fairly strong um, linear relationship between x and y. However, you know, uh, that, that strength is, um, is relative, as we're going to see now in the next example that I'll show you. So say here I'm looking at uh, two variables, x being um, the average hourly temperature measured in degrees Fahrenheit, and y is the natural gas consumption measure. Okay, and so I take a sample of eight observations and I take these, these measures right here. I'd like to know what the relationship, the linear relationship is here between X and Y. So I first uh, look at a scatter plot of X and Y and what I see is this over here. Looking at the scatter plot, I can see that there seems to be uh, some linearity between X and Y. I see that uh, as x is increasing, that's the average temperature in Fahrenheit, degrees Fahrenheit, the uh, natural gas consumption um, seems to be decreasing. Okay, so I'm expecting here that I'm going to be getting a sample covariance measure that is negative. And it should be fairly different than zero. So let's take a look. Here we are. I get my sample covariance measure of minus 25.6639. This is as a result of applying the, the formula that we saw here. OK. So, so that's, that's great. Now, what if I decided to change the unit of measure for x. What if I decided to work in degrees Celsius instead of degrees Fahrenheit? What would my sample covariance measure be? 
Let's take a look over here. So what I see over here is that I'm getting matching uh, x values in degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, and so for instance, uh, 28 degrees Fahrenheit over here is equivalent to a minus 2.22 degrees Celsius. So my x values change, however my y values do not change over here. When I look at my scatter plot of x and y, I notice a very similar layout of my points, right? So let's compare the two scatter plots. Notice how the two scatter plots look very similar over here. So I'm expecting that my sample covariance, when x is in degrees Celsius, should be the same, right? In fact, over here, I get a sample covariance of minus 14.2535. Clearly, sample covariance is sensitive to the units of measure that are used for either x or y or both, right? So what can we say about sample covariance? Well, what we can say over here is that the magnitude of covariance does not indicate the strength of the relationship because over here we see that the magnitude of the covariance depends on the unit of measure used for the data. So in other words, sample covariance is not a reliable measure for the strength of the, of the linear relationship between x and y because it will differ if I change my units of measure. In my, in my sample observations. So we need to turn to a more robust um, measure of linear relationship between x and y. That measure is called the correlation coefficient. So the correlation coefficient for a sample is identified by the symbol lowercase r. Notice how this measure here is in fact a function of sample covariance s of x, y, which we saw just before, right? Here it is. So in fact, sample uh, correlation coefficient uses the sample covariance, but it also divides it by the sample standard deviations of x and y. S of x here is the sample standard deviation for x, and S of y is the sample standard deviation for y. And by doing this, we eliminate the limitation of units of measure. Okay, so let's go back to our example, and here we see that when looking at our uh, sample observations for x in degrees Fahrenheit, if I apply the formula that we just looked at over here for r, we get here a value of r of minus 0 0.9484, okay? Which tells me once again that my relationship between x and y is negative, and it's got a, a, a magnitude here, a, a strength of uh, 0.9484, of course, here on the negative side, right? Okay, now how about if I look at my, uh, my sample correlation coefficient when x is measured in degrees Celsius? Well, guess what? I get here exactly the same r value, minus 0 0.9484. So there's something to be said here about r, and that is that it is not sensitive to the units of measures that are used for your data. Okay, thanks to this division over here by S of X and S of Y. More on, on R, we know that R here will always lie between minus one and plus one. 
when r is close to minus 1. This is an indication that I've got a negative relationship between x and y, and the relationship, the linear relationship, is strong. If I have an r value that is close to 0, this is an indication that the linear relationship between x and y is weak. So, for example, an r value of uh, minus uh, 0.05 would be an indication that I've got a weak negative linear relationship between x and y. An r value of plus 0 0.015 is also another example that I've got a weak positive, this time, linear relationship between x and y. And finally, when you have an r value that is close to plus 1, then this shows that you've got a strong positive linear relationship between x and y. Okay, now keep in mind that r over here is a sample measure. In other words, r is used as a point estimate for a population measure. This population measure is the population correlation coefficient rho, this rho here, which looks much like a p. Okay, um, so so now we've uh, now that we've established uh, how to measure linear relationship between x and y, the next step is well now we'd like to predict y on the basis of x. And so to do that, well, we can draw a straight line through the scatter plot of the sample data and, and hopefully get a good line, right? The idea is that here I'd like to get, uh, I'd like to draw a line and, and get a function over here that represents my line in order to be able to predict y in terms of x. The problem with that, though, is that you know, I can maybe see the best suitable line uh, to go across um, my scatter plot over here, but the line that I see may not be the same line that someone else uh, sees um, proper to to join all the dots um, in um, in the best possible linear fashion, right? So we need to uh, have uh, one way. Uh, to draw the best line in order to establish a linear relationship between x and y. And so we look at the least squares line. The least squares line is a method that will uh, minimize the sum of the squared vertical distances between points on the scatter plot. In other words, you want to draw a line over here Right, you want to draw a line right here that will minimize uh, the distance of each point relative to your your line. And so, this line here um, must be generated by using, well, if you remember from uh, functions, uh, a line is is generated uh, by using a slope and a y-intercept, right? So let's just go back to the slides over here. And so here we are. We need to determine the slope and the y-intercept, the slope being b1 and the y-intercept here represented by b0, OK? So uh, using the least squares method. This is the formula that we must use over here to determine the slope. So first you want to find your slope. Once you have your slope, then you can go ahead and find your y-intercept right here. Okay, so slope is equal to s of xy over s of x squared. Now, if you remember, s of xy is, in fact, the sample covariance of x and y, which we just discussed. And this is divided by the sample variance of x. OK, let's not forget over here what the sample covariance of x and y is and sample variance of x. Here we are. And so 
basically B1 is equal to this over here. Once we have B1, then we can now go ahead and determine what is the y-intercept B0. So the y-intercept is the y-value uh, that you get when your line intersects the y-axis and when x here is equal to 0. In other words, it's that 0 B0 point, right? That is what your B0 value is, is that uh, is that coordinate in the 0 B0 point. And so B0 here is, is um, uh, equal to here the average value of all your y observations minus your slope B1, which you have to find beforehand, okay, uh, multiplied by the average value of all your x observations. Okay, and so uh, that concludes the first part of, um, of this uh, series here. Uh, and so we will next uh, continue with simple linear regression.